So what do you do when you're studying for an actuarial exam, but you don't know anyone else that has taken the exam before? Well, you mess up. That is what happened to me when I was studying for my first actuarial exam. I actually ended up passing it on my third attempt. So I made lots of mistakes along the way. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the top three mistakes that I made so that you can avoid those mistakes and hopefully increase your chances of passing the exam and pass it as quickly as possible. By the way, I'm Bria, associate of the Society of Actuaries and founder of the Actuary Accelerator community, where we train future actuaries how to become top candidates so that they can get their actuarial dream job as quickly as possible. Now let's get into today's video. Three, two, one. So the first mistake that I made was using an approach called blocking rather than a different approach that has been proven to be more effective for math exams. When you're studying for an actuarial exam, you most likely, or at least you probably should, do tons and tons and tons of practice problems. And this will help you really get comfortable with the types of questions you can expect on the exam and the types of ways and different ways that questions can be asked. What most people do and what I did in the beginning too was to take a topic and just do tons of practice problems on that one topic and then move on to another topic and do tons of practice problems on that topic and then move on again to a different topic and do tons of practice problems. So basically I was doing all my practice problems on one topic and then another topic and then another topic. This is called the blocking approach and what I have learned now after helping tons and tons of future actuaries in studying for their actuarial exams and also with my own studying as well is that this approach is not as effective as it could be. There's another approach called the interleaving approach. And with this approach, what you do is you first go through all the topics that you are learning for the exam, and then you do tons of practice problems for all those topics. But the thing is, you don't do them in sections. You don't do questions on one topic, and then the next topic, and then the next topic. Instead, you blend all the questions up together, and you do them randomly. So you might get a question on topic B, and then a question on topic D, and then a question on topic C, and then one on E, and then one on A. You just never know what topic the question covers, and this really allows you to learn how to recognize what types of problems are going to be asked in different ways. It really allows you to be able to switch your mind between different topics. And it has been proven mathematically, I will actually link down below to the article that I read about this, that for math exams, this approach is much more effective. And when you're studying for actuarial exams, doing lots of math over and over and over again, I would assume that you want to use the approach that is most likely to help you be able to recall these topics in the long term term. Most of the time you are studying for actuarial exams over months. So this is an approach that's really going to help you be able to retain that information over the long term rather than your typical studying when it's only maybe a couple of days you're studying for or something like that. I have heard that the blocking approach can work for those short term types of studying situations, but actuarial exams, you need to be in it for the long haul. You need to make sure that your studying approach reflects that. By the way, I do have a training coming up all about how to study for actuarial exams effectively. So if you want to know more about this interleaving approach and how to incorporate it into your own studying, I highly recommend you go sign up for that training so that you don't miss it. Okay, so now let's get into number two, mistake number two, and that is to make a plan. Now, don't stop the video right away. I know everyone says make a plan. Time management is so, so, so important, but I really, really, really want you to be able to make a plan that is going to be effective for you. Now, a lot of the time as future actuaries, we tend to over overestimate how much we can get done and we also tend to have a lot of other stuff going on aside from just studying for our exams. A lot of the time we're working, maybe you're in school, maybe you have extracurricular activities you like to do, maybe you just like to spend some time with friends and family. That is all stuff that you definitely need to get done and it should be able to fit into your schedule but the thing is it's only going to fit into your schedule along with your actuarial studying if you make a plan and this has to be a realistic plan. It has to be a plan that's actually achievable. So about 10 years ago, I would say, yeah, 10 years ago, I decided to start actually planning my days. I would decide exactly what I wanted to get done every single day. And this was really effective for me because previously I was just kind of going with the flow. I was getting to things when I got to them. And I found that a lot of the time I wasn't getting things done in a decent amount of time. Not having a time frame allowed me to kind of slack off a little bit. There were also times when I just had so many things I wanted to get to that it felt 
overwhelming. I didn't really feel like I could get all that done and it made me kind of feel like I just wanted to give up, not even try. So once I decided to start making a plan for the day, a realistic plan of what I wanted to get done, it really helped me because I was able to finally start achieving these things. I had a reasonable, realistic plan in place of the things that I wanted to do. So what I would do is I would break down my day and decide on three to four things I really wanted to get done that day. I made sure that I fit those things in no matter what. Now the thing is you can say you want to get these three things done in a day. The part that I found the hardest but most effective was that I also set time restraints for these things. So let's say I wanted to get done a whole chapter in my study material on a specific day. I might decide okay I'm going to dedicate two hours to this specific studying assignment that I have for today. And for me what really helped was having that time frame because I could no longer just dilly dally. I could no longer take a few minutes to look on my phone and just scroll through Facebook, get lost on there or YouTube, whatever it may be, because I knew I had to get this done within two hours. That is all the time I had. So this might be something that helps you. If you can really figure out realistic time frames for the things that you need to get done, it's going to help you make sure that your tasks for the day are achievable. But another great thing about this is that you're also going to be hopefully able to schedule in some time for yourself. It is so, 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 so important to be able to have time to do things that you enjoy. Otherwise, you're going to get burnt out. You're going to hate studying for actuarial exams. And it's very possible that you would decide to quit the actuarial career because you're just not feeling like it's fulfilling anymore. If it's constantly stressing you and you don't enjoy it, then it's going to be really hard to get through all the actuarial exams. So I do highly encourage you to make sure there is time in your schedule every single day, if possible, to do things that you enjoy, whether that's half an hour just watching YouTube. Maybe it's half an hour going for a walk. Maybe it's half an hour going to the gym. It doesn't matter what it is, but it needs to be something that you actually really enjoy. And that too was something that I failed to do when I was going through my early actuarial exams. I did not plan time for myself and it stressed me out so, so bad. Okay, so here's something you may not know about me. I actually play a lot of pool, like billiards, on a pool table that we have downstairs in my basement. Now, I promise this is going somewhere. So every Thursday, I go out to a pool league where we actually play against other people people. Now what I've been finding since I joined that pool league was that I feel really really comfortable downstairs in my basement playing pool but when I go to the league and play against other people when it really matters well I get so much more nervous and I do not perform nearly as well as I can downstairs in the basement. I'm comfortable downstairs I'm not so comfortable out there on pool tables that I don't get to use very often playing against people I don't know very well so it's it makes me nervous. Now this exact same thing happens to people taking exams. A lot of the time I see people studying for their actuarial exams in the office at home, maybe in the bedroom at home, places they feel comfortable, maybe the office even. That's okay, you definitely are going to have to do the majority of your studying in two or three specific places. But here's what I highly recommend in order to allow you to be able to perform better on exam day when you're not going to be in your home, you're not going to be in your office, okay? Go and do your practice exams in in different areas throughout your community. So of course when you're studying for an actuarial exam you need to do tons of practice exams to really get comfortable with the time limits, to get comfortable with answering questions quickly and just being in that kind of exam setting. But if you do all those practice exams in the exact same place, let's say it's the office in your house, well you're going to get really comfortable doing them there but when you go to the exam center and you're in a totally new environment that you've never been in before and you're trying to do the exam in that situation, you might find it's a really difficult thing to do because you're just not comfortable doing exams in different places. You may not be comfortable with hearing some chit chat in the background. Yes, unfortunately when you do actuarial exams sometimes there are going to be minor distractions in the background so you have to be able to tune those out and continue to work on your exam. And the best way to do that is to go to different areas in your community. Maybe your library, maybe if you work in an office you could try doing some there and there are other places all around that you could just try doing these exams so that you you can get comfortable being in different situations and having different background noise. It's really going to help you be able to perform well on exam day and it's another variable that you really do have in your control even though it can kind of feel like you don't. So my advice to you is to go out there especially as your exam gets closer and do some exams, practice exams in different places. Okay so these are three big mistakes that I made. I have tons more that I could share with you. I actually do have a training all about studying that is coming up tomorrow so that's Wednesday. February 
February 15th. This training is going to be all about studying for actuarial exams. I'm going to go through what you can expect, how to really prepare, and I'm also going to be doing a Q&A session where you can ask me any questions you have about preparing for your first actuarial exam. This is really geared towards exam P and exam FM. So if that is something that you would like to attend with me tomorrow night, then please, please, please go and register. I will put a link down below in the description so you can go sign up for that and you won't miss any of the details. Okay, I will see you in two weeks from now. Bye!